today in our shop, we have this Ford F-150. We've identified a top five list of problems we're going to go over with this car. There may be a bonus sixth at the end if you stick around. I'll give you a hint now. It's not going to be some of the obvious stuff you would think about. It's going to be some less obvious parts inside this car. We'll take a look. All right, so you hop in your Ford F-150, grab your key, and in our case, put your clutch all the way in. I'm going to try and start it up. Notice we're on the front fuel pump. It starts, but then it dies. So, in the Ford F-150, you have a selector switch for your front and rear tank. Let's put it to the rear tank, see what happens. Starts right up. Give it a little gas. Stays running. Let it idle out. Pretty good. So, what's the issue? Sometimes, your front and rear pumps aren't working correctly. Could either be the front, could be the rear pump. Let's dig into it. The first thing I want you to do is flip it with the key and the ignition on to either front, wait a few seconds, or the rear, whichever your opposite, and check your fuel gauge. Make sure you actually have some fuel in both tanks. Now, if you have fuel in both tanks, and you're still flipping the switch, and in one section or the other, it's not starting, you may have a pump that's not working correctly. Now, you have two fuel tanks, which means you have two fuel pumps. Your fuel pump has two lines on it. One's a feed, and one's a return. Typically, what's gonna happen is on your return line, there's gonna be a shuttle valve that isn't working correctly, and it's staying open, which means that when your opposite tank is running, you're putting fuel back into your front tank or your opposite tank and overfilling it. Now this can happen in the front or the rear, but it's overfilling the tank and the valves aren't working correctly. So you'd wanna get back there. If you can get access to these lines up here, go to your thinner tube, your smaller line, your return line, see if you can blow some air in there. If you can pass air through, that means your valve is actually stuck open. Now if your valve's stuck open, you're gonna to wanna to replace that pump. You're going to want to do that either the front or the rear, but you're definitely going to want to check them both. So our next problem is going to be crank, but no start. The engine's turning and cranking, but you're not getting the vehicle to start. There's no gas igniting, there's no stumbling, it's just cranking away. And if you keep doing that, you may kill your battery. If you run into this issue, we've identified a problem under the hood. So let's take a look. You're going to lift your hood open, you're going to find your belt tensioner or your power steering, you're going to look behind it. You're going to see your distributor, right in front of that you're going to see an ignition coil. Your ignition coil typically goes bad in these vehicles. We have one here to show you. So sometimes this whole assembly will go bad. It'll crack, sometimes they just get old with wear, they take a lot of heat and a lot of abuse. So what you want to do is try and replace this ignition coil here. What you also want to do is take a look in here at your contacts. Make sure they're clean on both sides, the plug side and the ignition coil side. If they have a little corrosion on them, they look a little green, a little white, go ahead and sand them down, scratch them up the best you can, try that plug again, see if it works. Also, make sure your spark plug boot is fully connected on the inside here and it's making full contact pressed all the way down. So now for our next problem. It's going to be under the hood. It's going to be your EGR valve right back here underneath your windshield washer motor right by your firewall. Now what this is, is it's part of your emission system and your smog system recirculates exhaust gases. Now if these fail, sometimes it causes rough idle, rough running, sometimes it causes stalls as well. So if you're having issues like that, check your EGR valve. Sometimes they're stuck open, stuck closed due to the carbon buildup in that system. So not only do we have our EGR valve on top here, Right underneath it, or if you follow this green line down, you'll see your EGR control valve solenoid down the bottom here. Now you'll have a power plug, and you'll have two vacuum lines. The vacuum lines here, if you disconnect those and try and blow air through this solenoid with the power off or removed, then you can blow air through that, 
probably have a problem with your solenoid here. If you take this out, put it on the bench, put some power and ground to these terminals, and then try and blow through it, and you can pass air through there, then this probably isn't your problem. If you follow this green line back up, you do have a diaphragm here on top. This diaphragm could be seized, and this part could be your problem. If you need an EGR valve, check out 1AAuto.com. So next on our list, inside the vehicle. It's gonna be part of your HVAC control system. You're gonna have a knob for fan speed, high, low, medium. You're gonna have a knob for where you want your air to come out of, top of the dash, by your feet, in the center. The knob that we're concerned about that'll help you find your blend door actuator is gonna be your hot and cold. When you switch between hot and cold, you may notice you're not getting one or the other. Typically, when you spin this knob, there's a vent or a blend door actuator inside your HVAC system, which is located behind your glove box. That blend door may not be moving, or it may actually be broken on its pivot. So to access the HVAC box behind your glove box, take a look right behind there, that's your HVAC system. There's also, right underneath here where you put your feet in the passenger side, you'll see a black box up under your dash. That's part of your HVAC system too. That's where you're gonna find your blend door actuator. Next on our top five list, oil pan gasket. You ever notice a puddle of oil under your car when you come out in the morning or after work? Sometimes it's your oil pan gasket. Sometimes it's actually the oil pan itself. And what happens is that gasket will get really old and brittle or sometimes it gets over tightened when it gets installed. So the oil pan gasket, probably a leak if you're seeing oil on the ground. Now sometimes the oil pan itself can rot out from the inside out. A little bit of moisture, a little bit of corrosion. If you wipe your oil pan down with a good brake cleaner or a grease remover and take a look at that oil pan and you see that there's no holes or nothing coming through or no wet spots after you've cleaned it on the pan itself, it's probably the gasket. If you need either one of them, check out 1AAuto.com. So if you've stuck around till this point, you get our extra, shackles. So shackles on the rear of these Fords tend to break. If you take a look up here, you can see a prime example of that. Rear shackles that are broken. So this one actually broke off and the leaf spring jammed right up into the bottom of the bed. You can see it right there. So our bed is actually not sitting level. Now sometimes what you'll hear is really bad clunks, noise. It'll sound like something in the back is really loose. If you look at this one, you can see, I'm not sure, the rear end is actually not level. Now these should sit level, even when in the air. And when this is on the ground, definitely not sitting level. So part of the problem here is that the shackle itself is broken. The other problem that happens right around the shackles is rust. So the frame rails in the back between the rear and the front shackles of your leaf spring, sometimes the frame rails rot right around those areas and the shackle might be good, but the mount sometimes breaks. So take a look at that area. There's your bonus. And that wraps up our top five for this Ford F-150. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, ring the bell for future notifications on videos just like this Ford here. And if you need any parts that we discussed or anything for your project, go to 1AAuto.com. Hey, welcome, hey, hi. Um, hello, hi. Sometimes will cause your car to rough idle. Means you're stared at a stop, like, subscribe, and ring that bell for future notifications on our videos. Have a good one.